Hey everybody, it's Mike Shazer here in Seoul, South Korea at Proof Suite, and today we're going to talk about triangular arbitrage, uh, review a little bit what we learned about looking for arbitrage in DeFi markets, as well as executing arbitrage. We're going to take things a little further, and we're actually uh, going to use a streamlined tool that we've developed to actually execute the triangular arbitrage going from, for example, Kyber, who gives away way too many t-shirts at their DeFi conferences, as well as Bancor and Uniswap. So we're going to go between different tokens and different DeFi platforms, as well as uh, think about how we might develop uh, certain strategies. So let's take a look. All right. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, this quickly put together tool uh, that we created to uh, review a little bit of the stuff that we learned in the previous videos and uh, I'm just going to click on execute ARB. It's going to take me down here. Uh, and this is the UI. Usually you would start with a sta stable coin. Um, and so these are actually ordered by kind of like what makes sense. Usually you would start with a stable coin. You'd go to uh, another kind of coin. Uh, and then you'd go back into a stable coin. So the stable coins are up here. And they're not in alphabetical order. Kind of just more like by popularity slash volume. Um, and a little bit of it's arbitrary. You know, please leave your feedback how you'd like to see that. I'm pretty sure uh, that a better way to do this would would probably be alphabetical order, but for now it's just a quick tool to kind of talk about the .arb function that we talked about in a few of the videos. The first thing you'll want to do is to unlock your wallet. So usually MetaMask will just kind of pop up by default like this when you first come to the website. Um, but if you click cancel or close out of it or don't have MetaMask, um, you'll need to click on the connect with MetaMask and then uh, connect. And then you'll see your account number uh, there. Uh, and then from here, you can actually uh, begin to, to interact with the, the tool so you'll go uh, so I'll start uh, now I've already approved it so what you'll actually see uh, so for example I haven't already approved USDC now you wouldn't go from you I mean you could go from USDC to maker to USDC uh, but you might use it's the ARB finder that we discussed in the last video most stable coins that are pegged to the dollar uh, kind of all have um, the same i'll have similar values but some are more valuable than others at certain points in time um so as far as a strategy you know you would be going to the thing that makes the most sense um so i'm just going to go um usdc maker to die so i'll approve the first token that's the only uh, token that you need to approve because that's what you're starting with you'll have to approve that to the four feet smart contract and so i'll click confirm this uses the the highest gas uh, just so this happens fast because this is a, a cheaper kind of transaction but you can go to edit and you can you know make it much cheaper if you'd like right now uh the default gas that we're giving is pretty high because there's a lot of volume uh but you know that's something uh, the your gas strategy when it comes to your arbitrage is really really important because uh, a lot of people are doing the same transactions because we're on an open ecosystem everyone can see everyone's trade so if you're if you see another trader inside of the ethereum ecosystem that's constantly uh, doing arbitrage a lot of people will will copy what they're doing and really what people are end up doing at that point is competing a, a, over gas if you pay a higher gas your transaction goes through quicker also it depends on what nodes you're connected to uh, as well and there's some other factors um, so that's a really important game uh, that one must master in order to do arbitrage if you're you know doing it to actually generate more substantial um, amounts of, of, of funds and so I'm just going to go here and click save uh, for that just to, so it can go through quick for this example. So you'll first confirm. And then, uh, as we can see here, we'll get the approval on the blockchain eventually. Um, so this should be within 30 something seconds because it's set to a really high gas fee. Um, Reddit made an announcement today that they're going to be doing ERC20 tokens for all their subreddits. So um, a lot of tokens have been moving around, a lot of uh, traffic, a lot of people also doing arbitrage. So right now probably wouldn't be the best time because the gas is so high. Um, this is a great reason why Layer 2 solutions um, and even F2 are going to be uh, necessary uh, for the space. And those are some things to really look out for and, and prepare for. That's been confirmed. So if I go back here, then it'll change and it'll, say, it'll now say execute because I can execute this. So you'll need to first go over and make sure that you actually have um, the tokens in your wallet. So, you know, I, okay, I have, let's see, USDC. I have five USDC, so that's, that's over two. Um, and then I'll click execute. 
So you'll see here that the gas, uh, because it's so high right now uh, to get a transaction through, um, this wouldn't really make any sense to pay $9 for two uh, USDC. But for the purposes of the, this example, uh, I'll run it. In fact, I'll make it a little bit higher in the name of science. And uh, you won't really spend much money at all if you, uh, you won't really spend much money at all if something is wrong and, and, it, and the transaction can't actually go through. Uh, and this is just an estimate. It'll probably be less than this. I'll click confirm. All right, and so here is my transaction here. Uh, I started with two USDC, and then I ended up with 1.96. So this was not a profitable trade. Uh, one example, one that I, I just did, if you don't count in the transaction fee, um, which are just astronomical right now due to just kind of overcrowding on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, we started with five DAI, and we ended up with 5.2. A zero one so we made two cents this is just for you know as an example if you if you right click uh, on the page and go to inspect um, and then click on a console or command shift C um, you can actually uh, see the command so we put it right here so this is what your smart contract is actually calling so this is the, can give you an idea so if you're just trying to like figure out like how would I do this for my smart contract um, you know we just kind of paste it right there so this is orphy.arb and you know the liquidity provider the, the return address this is where the money's gonna go back to at the end here is the liquidity provider in this case it's me and then you know I'm plugging in here the order uh, and then the the amount of money in the exchange so we, we do all like the decimals um, because two is equivalent to uh, this makes uh, USDC has six decimals. So uh, understanding how the decimal system works, um, this is what the Ethereum blockchain actually sees is um, this really high number. And usually it's 18 zeros so like we're, with DAI or whatnot. So there we go. We did. We went from Kyber to Uniswap um, or USDC to Maker to back to DAI. Um, and, you know, this is a very early. So if you, you have any issues or you want to, you know, if you have a... Uh, uh, a suggestion, please you know, feel free to reach out through the contact us form. Additionally, if you're looking for more custom solutions, more advanced strategy guidance, we do have custom solutions. Let's talk a little bit about arbitrage strategy. So, you know, one of the most effective strategies uh, that people uh, leverage on the Ethereum blockchain is actually copy trading. So um, they're monitoring the blockchain consistently. And whenever uh, there is a lot of arbitrage happening um, or certain patterns, uh, they're basically emulating those those things. And so if you find something that's successful, um, what's gonna end up happening is our people are gonna end up trying to copy your trade. So uh, one area uh, of successful arbitrage might be to use different addresses in different smart contracts. This can be a little expensive if someone's just monitoring the address. Um, and then the other thing that people can monitor uh, are the actual transaction has so if you're a smart contract make sure that you know you're the only one uh, who can interact with that smart contract from a specific address so if other people are just trying to call that same smart contract uh, that'll happen um and then additionally you know on or feed if people are calling dot arb you can actually go on or feed you can always find the or feed smart contract by going to the bottom of any of the or feed pages and clicking on mainnet address um and then you know you can go into transactions and you can see kind of what people you know have been doing you know so one one is that so protecting yourself from being copied which is hard to do but but it, there are ways to do it and then uh, also looking at what others are doing are, are some very uh, effective strategies because everything is out there additionally you know one one really important aspect is yes to understand the rates between the different stable coins that you're going between um in and usually you wouldn't go between you know wbtc to back to some, something else um but you know maybe you're playing 5d chess and you have some interesting ideas um so you know there there are things uh in that in that vein um but typically yes when volatility is higher uh, that's when there's the most opportunity um strategically you would want uh to perform arbitrage when the gas price is lower so you can go to fgasstation.info and kind of get an idea usually when fast is like below 10 is I, the, the most ideal time. This would not be ideal unless, of course, you don't want to pay $7 for a transaction. But if you're doing, you know, millions of dollars in you know, flash loans, then, you know, a $7 for a transaction is not a big deal if you're making even a small percent. Um, but if you're doing, you know, uh, smaller amounts frequently, then you, you you care a lot about the gas prices. And additionally, I'll leave a link in the description to uh, a paper that's uh, really uh, that really goes into a lot of the the areas of arbitrage, such as front running and things like that, uh, that one would might might want to be aware of, um, I, which I think is a very helpful resource uh, for people who are who are, who are doing this. Um, 
but there's the the gas and then yes of course the the volatility which we can get to by going to the arb finder uh, we kind of see okay we have slightly more volatility and this can be 300 percent it's really easy for right now things are not that volatile you can see that um, there's only been four big major uh, windows of volatility where there's a lot of arbitrage opportunity and the last one was 13 hours ago. So that's a little bit of information around uh, uh, strategies uh, that you might want to implement. Uh, in the next few lessons we'll be looking at lending and lending pools uh, and different opportunities that exist on the, on the interest rate side of things. I hope this was useful and thank you for watching.